Hey scholars, it's Mrs. Jasnika, and today in art class we're going to be drawing two cactus plants together on the same paper. Now before we begin, we want to make sure that our paper is in the correct position. So we want it to be horizontal, that means it's going long ways like this, not like this. The reason we have it sideways is because we want to put two plants on our paper. One cactus here and one cactus here. So I have to do sideways. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So the cactus that I'm going to draw on this side is going to be a big long one and on this side it's going to be short and round. And of course my cactus is going to be inside of a pot so I want to make sure that I draw the pot first. Now, I'm going to imagine that my paper is like this big because I want to keep everything on one side when I'm drawing. And I'm going to start by drawing the pot. So I'm going to turn my paper a little bit sideways so that I can draw a straight line. And this is going to be somewhere around the middle of this side of the paper. Now it's okay if your line is not perfect. As you can see, my line is not straight, but it's good enough for what we're doing. And now from here, I'm going to draw two lines going down. Like this, and like this. And this is gonna be the top of my pot. That means up here is where my cactus is going to be, and down here is going to be the rest of my pot. So I'm going to close off this shape and make a really long rectangle. So again, I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to connect this line here to this line here. There we go. So this little pot, or this is the rim of my pot, shall I say. And now I'm going to put two lines going down and close off the pot. Now you can either make the lines going straight down or some pots they get smaller as you get to the bottom. So either way is fine with me. I'm gonna do two straight lines for this one. And when I make my pot over here, I'll show you how it looks to make the lines go more inward. So we'll do both ways. So I'm gonna move a little away from the corner and I'm going to make a line from here until the bottom of my pot. So here's my straight line down, and now I'm going to come over here, right where this corner is, and I'm going to move to this little spot, so not that far away from the corner, kind of like here, and I'm going to make another line going down. I want to make it the same length as this one. There we go. And now I just have to close this box. So we have a long rectangle and then kind of like a square. So I'm gonna turn my paper so I can make a straight line to myself. And I'm gonna close the shape. Now there is my pot for my cactus. I think that's the hardest part, honestly. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna make the cactus itself. So I have about this much space to make my cactus. If I had made my pot a little bit lower, I might have had more space, but that's okay. So the way I'm going to make this cactus is I'm going to start from here, and make an upside down U shape, and then come back down. So it's going to be an upside down U shape, or you can see it kind of looks like the letter N. So let's see. I guess it's gonna be about this fat. So let's start here. Go up, but not hit the top of the paper. And then come back down. Ta-da! Now, this side's a little bit wider than this side, so if I wanted to, I guess I could come in a little more. Again, plants are organic shapes, which means that they can be not perfect. They don't have to be perfect. But 
I know that some of you are still trying to draw this, so I'll fix mine while you guys are drawing your upside down U shape. Oh my goodness, I keep messing up. Now any mistakes I make, if I'm drawing very dark, which I am, you're gonna be able to see all of my eraser marks. So I would always recommend that you draw very lightly so that if you need to erase a mistake, it won't stay on your paper. But of course, when we color this, it'll be really hard to see any mistakes you make anyway. All right, now to continue my cactus, I'm gonna make a little, I guess like arm coming out of the cactus. And actually, sometimes cactuses, also known as cacti, can have more than one of these. So I'm gonna make a curved line coming out, kinda looks like it's waving, hey guys. And I'm going to keep going up. So now it kind of looks like a backwards J. And from here, I'm gonna curve out. So now it looks like a hook. <laughs> and then from here, I'm gonna come back down until I come back and connect to the big cactus. So there's one arm. And of course, if you want to, you could always make another one of these on this side. In fact, I'll make another tiny one on this side and see how I like it. So I'm going to do it on this side. And of course, if you only want to do one, you only have to do one. So I'm going to make one, I guess, maybe right here. And again, I'm going to make this little curved line. Kind of looks like a parentheses. And from here, I'm going to go up. And it doesn't have to be the same size as the other one. So I'm going to make this one smaller. Now I have this weird little wiggly line, and I'm gonna curve down, so it looks like a hook, and then I'm gonna come back in, like that. So that's what my cactus looks like. Now we're not done yet. I am going to, of course, add lines on the cactus. I like to add details, and the most important part is I want to add little lines, little prickly lines coming out of it so that it looks like a real cactus. <laughs> so let's see, let's start with making some wiggly lines going from the top to the bottom. There we go. So that's one wiggly line. They don't have to be perfect, but to make a wiggly line, I'm just gonna show real quick. All you have to do is make one curved line going one way and then a curved line going the other way. So it kind of looks like an S shape. And then again, a curved line going one way and then the curved line going the other way. And you just keep doing that. So it looks like an N and a U. N and a U. N and a U. All right, let's go back to this side again. And I'm gonna do another curvy line. Um, I guess I can make it go the opposite way. So this time I'm gonna make it go out here, out here, out here. There we go. But you can make them go the same way so they both look the same. Mm, maybe I'll put another one over here. Now you can do one or two of these. I'm gonna do four, four lines. There we go. Just to make it look kind of cool. Cause again, I like details. Now I'm gonna put one over here and you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I'm gonna put one over here. There we go. That one's a little messed up, but no big deal. And now of course, let's add all of the needles. So I'm only gonna make my needles come out from these lines. Now, of course, you can do it however you want, but I like the idea of having the needles come out only from these little lined areas. So to do that, I'm just gonna make some diagonal lines. So here's one, here's two. One, two. 
one, two. Now I guess they can go the opposite way too, but I like when they're facing up. So I'm just gonna make what looks kind of like a V shape. So technically I can make it look like that. And I'm just gonna make these V shapes all over the cactus, right on the line. So I guess they kind of look like arrows, but they also look like V shapes. So right now you should be adding your V shapes wherever you want. There we go. I think I'll put one more down here. There's one. All right, now that we're done with the first cactus, we're gonna work on the second one now. So I said this one was gonna be kind of tall and this one was going to be more round and kind of chubby. So let's work on this one now. We're gonna be starting with the pot first. So to do the pot, again, we wanna make a little rectangle at the top that looks like this. And then we're gonna be doing lines going down, but instead of straight down like we did here, we're gonna make them come in a little bit. So to begin, I'm going to start with the line right here. I'm gonna make it a little bit higher this time because this cactus is not gonna be as tall as this one. So I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm gonna make as straight of a line as I can. Now, of course, if you wanna use something to make a straight line, you can. So you could always use like the side of something to make a straight line by going like this. And then let me show you real quick. Um, you can trace the side of it to make a straight line like that and you can see that line looks a lot better than the line I did on the top. But if you don't have a piece of paper or a notebook or something that you can use to make a straight line, you could just make them like I do and make them by hand. Alright, so now I have the top line and I have the bottom line too since I showed you guys how to trace with something that's not a ruler. I'm going to connect this line here to down here, and I'm going to connect this line from here to down here. Boop, and boop, done. Now I'm going to make the lines like I, how I did here, except I'm going to make them go inward a little bit more. So I'm going to start from right around here and right around here. This is going to be the two spots where my lines come down from. And I'm going to make a line that goes like this. And again, it's going inward, it's not straight down. But if you wanna make it straight down, you can. And then from here, I'm gonna make a line also going inward a little bit. So see, these lines are going in. The top is wider than the bottom. Now I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to make a straight line connecting the two sides like this. And we could of course add different uh, details or lines inside the pot to make them look nicer. So I'm going to make a line that looks like this. Now if you are in fifth or sixth grade and you wanna make your pot look a little bit more realistic, let me show you quickly how you can do that. So let's say here's the top, here's that other line, here are the lines connecting. You can make the bottom of the pot curved. So to do that, I'm going to make these two lines going down. And here, instead of connecting the two lines with a straight line, you can connect them with a curved line like this. Now, of course, you could always do that to the top. Also, you can make this part curved, but I'm not going to do that because again, I wanna make sure that I make it as easy as possible. But if you wanna make this bottom line curved, then you would also need to make this other part of the pot curved if you're gonna make another line like I did. 
So that's one way you can make it look more realistic. All right, now let's go ahead and continue our cactus on this side. I'm gonna be making a round cactus. It's going to be a little wider, so I'm gonna make it start on these two ends and just go up like a bump. So it's going to look kind of like I'm making a circle, except that the bottom is hidden inside the pot. So to start, I'm making a curved line going up. I'm gonna go all the way around and come back into the pot. There we go. It's not perfect, but I guess I can always fix it later. Now I'm going to make another little bump coming out. So if this were a real cactus, it would probably have little sprouts coming out of it like this one does. So to do that, I'm just going to make a little ball coming out from here. And I'm not gonna make another one on this side only because then it's gonna look a lot like a bear or Mickey Mouse or something. So I, I don't wanna make it look like that. So instead I'm just gonna have that one little ball right here. And then I'm going to add the lines of the cactus. So I'm gonna make it look like the lines that you would see on a pumpkin. And to do that, I guess let's start right here in the middle. So my lines are gonna curve like C shapes. Oops. When they are on this side, they're gonna curve like a C. When they're on this side, they're gonna curve the opposite way. If that's too hard for you, you can just make the lines go straight down. So from here, I'm going to make a curved line like this. Now I'm gonna make another curved line and another curved line. They're not perfect, but you can see that all of them look like really flattened C shapes. And now on this side, they're gonna go the opposite way. So from here, this one starting point, I'm gonna make the line go this way. Then I'm gonna make another curved line and another curved line. So now we have a bunch of lines so that I could put the little um, needles. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here. I'm just gonna make a couple of curved lines. There we go. And they don't have to be perfect because again, these are organic shapes. Now for this one, I'm gonna make the needles look a little bit different. So. This time, I'm still gonna make them on the lines, but I'm gonna make it have more than just one V. So I'll start, I guess, over here. This time I'm gonna make the V shape, and then I'm gonna add some more prickly lines coming out. So now it's got five lines. And I'm gonna do that a few times. So I'll just make a bunch of lines coming out of one spot. I'll do that over here. I'll do it over here. And it doesn't have to be like this. If you think this way is easier or nicer looking, you can do that. Either way is fine with me. And I'm gonna make one more coming out of the side. There we go. Oh, you know what? Let me make one at the top. There we go. All right, now we can see that there are two different types of cactus plants, but they are still both really awesome. And now we're gonna be talking about shading. So we can color with any type of material and do shading, but it's easier to do it with colored pencils in particular. So I'm actually gonna color one of these with colored pencils and I'm gonna color another one with either markers or crayons. And whichever one I don't do, I'll color the back. It's probably, I'm probably gonna do the back one in crayon. So to blend colors, 
in art makes our art look more realistic and it makes it look like it has value, which is one of the elements of art. So I am going to show you guys how to color one of these using different shades of green and also different shades of whatever color I choose to make the pot to look more realistic. Before we start that, let me go ahead and outline everything and then erase my pencil marks. While I'm doing this, if you want to outline yours and erase your pencil marks, you can do that now. All right, so I'm done outlining all of my drawing part and I also erased all of my pencil marks so they wouldn't be showing through. I did the best I could. All right, now I'm gonna start coloring. So I'm gonna color this one with colored pencils and I'm gonna color this one with markers and I'm also gonna show how to use different colors to blend together to make a drawing with crayons. So in fact, I'm gonna do crayons first, cause I'll do that on the back. And what I'll do is I'll just draw, let's say a real small cactus here, just so that I can show how that looks. All right, so here was my really quick drawing of a cactus. This one I just put lines wherever, which actually looks super cool, and now I wish I had done it on the front, but you know what, that's for a different story. All right, so I picked four crayon colors. I'm not gonna be able to do this part unless I do it the same colors. I try to pick colors that 
I thought would work well together. As we know, a cactus is usually green, so I will definitely be using these two colors. I'm using a dark blue to make a shadow, and I'm using yellow to make a lighter color. So I'm going to start by adding the darkest color first. What, why would you do that? Well, if I add the darkest color very lightly with a crayon, then I can put the other colors on top really dark and it'll actually cover this color, but make the green look darker. So all I'm doing right now is just adding some of the blue very lightly to the bottom of my cactus. And I'm gonna do the same thing on all the bottom parts because I imagine the light would be coming from the top and so the bottom of something is going to be darker. So here is my blue, which a cactus is definitely not blue. And now I'm going to put the green on top of it. So here, I'm putting green on it and now I'm going over it. So now the green is over all the blue part and a little bit on top of the white part of the paper. So you can see this green looks lighter than the green that has the blue under it. And that is how we make value in our drawing. So here, I'm just adding the green going up and actually I can add the green going up the lines too. And I can do that over here. So now I have blue and dark green, right? Now I'm going to add light green. And again, I'm going to put the light green on top of the color before it, which in this case was dark green. I don't have to put it on the blue part. And I'm just going to put the color going on top of the dark green and also a little after the dark green, like that. And now it's gonna be going this way. There we go. All right, now the final touch. I'm gonna take the yellow and I'm gonna add highlights. Highlights are just a light color that is where the light hits whatever the object is. Now this is more for like sixth grade. We don't have to talk about exactly how this works, but just know the light would be coming from the top and if light is shining down on something, it's gonna make the top of it look really bright and the bottom look dark. So now I'm going to just color this in. And if you don't want that much yellow on your cactus, that's okay, you don't have to put this much. And this was made with four crayons. And honestly, I think that looks awesome. If I had more crayons, then I would have done the pot also, but you can see that this takes a super long time. So. That is how you blend using crayons. You just color with the darkest color first, and then you put the other colors on top, going from darkest to lightest. There's a lot of ways to do this, but Miss Jasnika likes to do it this way. So whichever way works for you, that will be the way that you should do it. <laughs> there we go. All right, now let's go to the other side. Now, if you are working with colored pencils, you will also be doing the same thing using the colors that you have. As you can see, I just have a 12 pack of Crayola marker, or excuse me, crayons, and I'm gonna be using four colors. The colors that I'm using are dark blue, or in this case, I guess it's just blue. <laughs> then I'm gonna be using the dark green, which is called green, and then I'm using yellow green, and then finally yellow. So I'm going to do the same thing again, imagining that the light is hitting from the top, I'm going to make the dark part on the bottom. So I don't have to put a lot of pressure, I'm actually doing this very lightly.
I like to color in circular motions. It makes it look easier to blend. So when I'm coloring or drawing or whatever, I just make little circles with my colored pencil. All right, now I'm gonna do it over here. Going up. And I'm gonna do it over here. Again, going up. This will be my darkest color. If you don't have blue, you can always use black because black is also very dark and it could go under the color that you're using. Black is a really good shadow color. In fact, I'm gonna use it just to show you what I mean. So I'll use black also. So right down here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of black at the very bottom. And again, I'm not coloring hard. I don't want it to be super, super dark because then you won't be able to see the color I put on top of it. There we go. So now I have the darkest color being black this time. And I have the blue over the black. Normally we would put the black first and then the blue on top of it. But since I didn't think I was going to use black, I didn't do it until after, but that's okay. All right, now I think we're ready to start using the green. I could always add more colors after if I need to. I'm going to now color on top of both of these colors with green. Now having the blue and the black under the green like this should make the green look really dark. Colored pencils are actually my favorite way of blending. Markers are not so easy to blend with unless you have really good markers. Um, not that Crayola is not good because Crayola is pretty great, but um, they're not alcohol markers and alcohol markers are the ones that you can blend with um, as a professional artist. So now I have the dark green and the black at the bottom. And as I go up, the green is getting lighter because there's no blue under it. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now you're probably wondering why I chose to do cactuses for this. And the reason why is because I actually think that cactuses or cacti are really easy plants to take care of. And because I have a lot of cats, I can't have plants. So I usually end up getting a cactus because my cats can't eat it. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself. So I'm gonna keep coloring, and I know this is taking quite a long time, but it is really fun to watch someone color. At least I think so. All right, so now we have the dark green. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the dark green going up a little on the lines of the cactus. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think it's gonna look more 3D if I do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just outlining the areas that have these lines. It doesn't have to be perfect because when you put the light green over it, it's going to help blend it together. So it's okay if it's not perfect.
There we go. All right, and now I'm going to do the light green. Again, we wanna put the light green on top of the green, like so. And then you're gonna put a little bit going out of the green. So the part that's white, the paper part that's white. I'm gonna leave just a small spot that I can color yellow. And I'm gonna continue to color on top of the dark green. This makes it look more vibrant because it has more than one color. You can see where the green is just dark green by itself. It's not as bright. And when I color the light green on top of the dark green, it makes it look more vibrant. If you hear that noise in the background, that's my dog. Now I'm hoping I don't have to sharpen this colored pencil because I'm lazy. Although I do have that sharpener there, if I do need it. I might need it. I hope not. I'm just gonna color the best I can. Normally I color in circles, but I can't really do that right now without sharpening my colored pencil. Okay, so I'm leaving this spot here, this spot here, and this spot here so that I can color it with the yellow and make it look extra bright. Man, my dog's so annoying, I swear. All right, and finally, I don't know how I made it through using the light green, but I did somehow. I'm going to color the last spots that are white with the yellow. All right, so here is my finished cactus. I still have to do the bottom part, but I'm gonna leave that for the end of the video. That way I can speed it up. This doesn't look as nice as I hoped because I didn't press as hard as I wanted to on the light green. So I'm just going back in real quick and pressing a little harder to try to get the lines to go away. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna do markers real quick on this side, which is the easiest one to do, but also the hardest. Um, and I'm going to be using these two colors, this color, and which one of these is the right yellow? This one, okay. Now the problem with markers is when you color with markers, well, Crayola markers, they don't really blend so you can kind of make them blend but if your paper is thin it's going to go through the paper and sometimes it will make a hole so if you are using markers I probably would not color too hard on the paper because if you do it's going to rip the paper so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color the bottom And again, all I'm doing is just coloring the part that's gonna have the darkest shadow first. Now this is actually going to dirty my yellow marker <laughs> because if I color on top of green with my yellow marker, it's gonna get it dirty. So I'm gonna try not to do that too much, 
but that would be how it works. So here I'm just making lines going up. That way when I start using the other colors, it'll be a little easier to blend. Now let's do it here. And now I'm going to start using the next green. Actually, let me put some lines here. Now again, it's a lot harder to blend with markers. Um, unless they're professional markers. So if you can't do this perfectly, it's really not a big deal. All we're trying to do here is get more than one color down because it will make your art look nicer. Now I'm going to put the next color, which here I just have a uh, normal green. What color is this? It literally says green, which is verde in Spanish. And I am coloring on top of that bluish green that I had under. Now this marker is actually running out, but that's okay. That's why we have more than one marker. So after I'm done using this one, I'm just going to color over it with yellow anyway, or light green, excuse me. So it doesn't matter if it's running out. Now notice how when I put the green on top of these lines of bluish green, they go away. Even with Crayola, you see I'm using Crayola. <laughs> so that is the way that you can blend with markers, is just putting lines of a color and then coloring on top of it. Now, of course, if I had used a darker blue, it would look even cooler. I guess I could have. I can still do it now, actually. So if I use dark blue here. so I could literally just go back in and put any color I want. Um, let's go back to the dark green, or the regular green, I guess. And I'm just coloring on top. Even though the marker is running out, that's not really a big deal. There we go. Now I'm going to use the light green, or I guess it's called lime green. Whatever marker colors you have is fine. I'm putting it over the dark green or the medium green and leaving a small spot right there to put yellow. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna color on top of the green and then on top of the white and leave a small spot near the top that's going to be yellow. Now this is a really lime green. Um, I probably would have used a less lime green, but that's all I had. So, good enough, I guess. So I've left a few spots near the top that are going to be yellow, as you see here. And all I'm doing is just coloring them in. As you can see, it's making my marker a little dirty. The way to fix a dirty marker, if you do this and you don't want your marker to be gross looking, is you color a scrap piece of paper and it will take out that little spot of nasty color. See, now it's coloring yellow again. Perfect. All right. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to speed this up so that you guys don't have to listen to me talking the entire time that I'm coloring. And I want you guys to use this time to blend colors together and see what colors are really close together that you can mix together to color your um, pots for your plants. Here we go.
All right, so here is my finished product. On the left hand side, I colored everything with colored pencils. And on the right side, I colored everything with markers. You can see the difference in how everything is blended. Here, I went from black all the way to yellow. From here, I went from what's called graphic green, but it's more like a blue green, all the way to yellow. And then the colors that I used for the pot were brown, dark red, or actually dark red here, light red. And then here I just used regular red, which was, I think this one, infrared. And then I used orange. So when you are blending, you gotta make sure you have more than just one color, of course. Preferably two or three. All right, now it's time for me to see what you guys have been working on.